So hi, everybody. I'm Katya. And I'm Rin. And we're here in Massachusetts at Commonwealth Holistic Herbalism. And we're so glad that you could join us today for our first ever Community Recovery Fund Zoomathon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for making the time. Thank you for being here. And um, I imagine showing up with a generous spirit. <laughs> I'm sure about it, in fact. Yeah. yeah. So we hope that today you're going to learn some helpful stuff and enjoy our time together. And if you're able to donate to the recovery fund, then that's fantastic. And we really, really appreciate it. So in the chat window, you will see um, some helpers helping out. It would be fantastic if you could introduce yourself in the chat window. Just say maybe if you like what where you are in the world um, and your name. Uh, Rebecca will be keeping the donation link current and easy to find so that you don't have to scroll too much for it. And there will also be a link to free educational resources. Today, we're going to try to cover six topics. But of course, in a short period of time, we can't get too in depth. So don't worry. There are um, audio lectures and transcripts for all the topics that we're going to talk about in much more detail, all available to you for free at that link. So even if you're not able to donate, you still will be able to receive much more in-depth information about the topics we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. And by the way, feel free to share that link with friends because that will have the donate button <laughs> as well as the links to, to these resources mm -hmm. as well. And these resources yeah. are available to anyone. So yeah, definitely share far and wide. Yeah. So there's some folks helping out here, uh, Tenby, Ryan, and Mel, they're going to be available to answer any questions that might come up for you during the event. Just go ahead and put them into the chat. If you do have questions that are about the herbal material that the two of us are talking about here today, then just because there's so many people and the AHG has a lot going on right now, <laughs> um, we can answer those offline. So just send an email over to us at info at commonwealthherbs.com and we'll make sure to get some answers over to you. Yeah. All right. Um, and just one last thing is that everybody who does donate today will receive a free gift. You will see in the donation link a breakout of um, different levels. And so if you donate up to a certain level, you'll receive this gift. If you donate up to the next level, you receive that gift. You can find more information about the courses that you will be receiving um, as your gift in the um link that is the the free resources link there's also information about each course so it, that can help you decide if you already have a course that is a free gift um then don't worry we can take care of either helping you donate your course um to a friend or donate your course to someone in the impacted area yeah. uh, all of the access information for your free gift courses has to be sent out manually. So just give us a day or two to be able to get all those email addresses from all the people who donate and send out all the emails. And again, if you have any questions about that part of it, go ahead and send those directly to us at info at commonwealthlibraries.com so that we don't have to clog up the AHG inbox with that, with that part of the stuff. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about herbal disaster readiness and recovery. With this, we hope that this will be material that will never be useful to you, <laughs> right? In the sense that you would never have to use it. We really hope for you that you wouldn't have to go through this kind of situation. But the reality is that it's very possible, right? And as we've seen, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world can be impacted by a situation like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, right now, more immediately, we also want to help you feel more connected to the people in the impacted communities right now yeah. by thinking about the kinds of things that they're going to be dealing with over the next months and beyond and thinking about how we as herbalists can support these kinds of health impacts in our communities. Mm -hmm. So we really want to be talking about what's going to be the the stuff that the folks in the whole Hurricane Helene area are going to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. We're going to start off with some psycho, uh, physiological aspects and herbs and strategies to support them. And then we're going to talk about emotional aspects and supports that we can provide for that. Yeah. So the first thing we want to talk about here is mold. <laughs> um, anytime there's a flood, uh, you know, or 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 you know, a storm surge, or any any situation where water got where people didn't intend water to be at, uh, <laughs> then mold is going to be a big issue. 
And it's going to take some time to, to be fully resolved. Right? It's not like a one and done sort of situation. Mm -hmm. So while people are being exposed to more molds and coping with that and trying to do remediation and so on, um, dealing with the impacts that has in the lungs, but like the whole respiratory tract is really critical. And the good news is that herbs can really help, mm. um, including in some ways to prepare that are that are very simple and very achievable, even if you don't have all the modern amenities available to you. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with uh, steams, right? right? Um, the benefit of a steam is that you're getting the steam and the herbs, like the constituents of the herbs carried on that steam, right to where the problem is, right? So when we're doing an herbal steam, we breathe it in, we get it into the sinuses, we get it into the to the lungs, right? All the way down. And we deliver that antifungal, antimicrobial effect of your plants right where you need it most. It's way more efficient than swallowing some capsules and trying to let it circulate around through your body and get to your sinus tissue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the herbs we're gonna choose for that when we're thinking about mold management will be um, the hot mints. So I'm thinking here about oregano, thyme, sage, uh, rosemary. Now, after a while, those can be kind of intense if you're doing that every day. So it is okay to switch them off with some of the a little less hot mints like peppermint or tulsi or even chamomile. Yeah. Um, but these, these plants have really strong antifungal actions. Also, um, you know, right now we might be in a situation where people's herbs all got wet. And so I want to be clear that the evergreens can really help us here too. Mm -hmm. And this can be pine, this can be spruce, this can be fir. So whichever of the evergreen trees that you have in your region, you really can just snip off the edges of the branches and put them in a steam. Um, and especially, you know, I, a lot of trees are down. And so you, you can take the branches without even hurting the tree. Um, yeah. So that's handy. Yeah, it's a very effective way to go ahead and work with them. And it, again, the whole variety of different kinds of evergreens is going to be fantastic there. Mm -hmm. Essentially, anything with a strong smell is really <laughs> is really like the the determination of what herbs you're going to choose to put into a steam like that. Mm -hmm. And remember, when you do a steam, you boil the water just by itself, right? And then you set it where you're going to take your steam. Now you throw your herbs in because you don't want to like boil them with the herbs in there. You're going to be losing their aromatics in the air as you do it. So you throw them right in, cover over, breathe it all in deep bring a handkerchief, you're gonna need that, <laughs> right? Um, effective, effective methods. Now, the problem is that people right now may not have the ability to boil water. Um, and so this is where essential oils can help. Um, handy, essential oils are in tiny bottles, so you can carry a lot of them to an affected area. And they don't require any electricity, any preparation, any boiling water. You can just take the lid off the essential oil. You don't even have to dump any of it out. Just hold it under your nose and breathe in deep as if it were a steam. You're still getting those volatile oil components. You're breathing them deep down into the lungs and up into the sinuses so that you're getting that antifungal, antimicrobial action and also the hot stimulation to help unstuck the sinuses because yeah. that is often a response to mold is to get really stuffy in the sinuses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um... Another option to consider here is calendula as a tincture in particular. Mm -hmm. This is one we found really, really helpful when people have that kind of like long-term irritation in the sinuses, some kind of mixed infection that is really hard to, to get it to go away. Mm -hmm. Even when people just throw antibiotic drugs at it, maybe it still cycles back around with a fungal version instead, right? So calendula is uh, something we found really, really helpful in those kind of situations. Take some tincture in the mouth, but really try to like hold it up against the roof <laughs> of your mouth with your tongue and get some direct absorption through the through the top of the mouth. That seems to be particularly effective way to work with calendula tincture in these in these times. Yeah. One of the ways that you know that this is a great idea is if your mouth is very itchy. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when there is a fungal infection in the sinuses, you, it, it makes that itchiness happen up in the palate of the mouth. So holding the calendula tincture up against that palate 
really does help to dissipate the medicine up in through the sinuses so that it is um, easy to get that action in there. Um, I find it to be very fast acting and it's calendula so you can do it again and again. You don't have to kind of be afraid of doing it too often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another thing that we're going to be really focused on uh, when we're we're coping with the effects of mold and and thinking about the respiratory system is the the integrity and the barrier type of function of your mucous membranes. So they're not meant to be like impermeable barriers, but we also don't want them to be super open and drippy. We don't want them to be so dried out that they're like cracked and bleeding because those are both forms of susceptibility to to further infection, right? So. Um, on, we can take two kind of extreme cases and say if the sinuses are really, really dry, your best friend is going to be something like marshmallow, a demulcent herb, something really hydrating and moistening and, and soothing to that kind of irritated tissue. Um, and that can be both something that you apply directly, like, yeah, you can make a nasal spray or just like put some up inside there, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, we can do a neti pot if you're into that kind of thing. But just drinking marshmallow infusions uh, when they're good and thick and all of that that does have a reflex action on the mucus mucous membranes up here as well, as well as in the lungs, as well as other places in the body. And the nice part of that is no electricity or power source required because a marshmallow cold infusion is cold. You just get some water that is drinkable, clean water, so it can just be bottled water, whatever, and put the marshmallow root right in it, wait a couple of hours, let it thicken up just a little bit, and it's ready to go. Now, on the other hand, if the mucous membranes in the in the nose and the sinuses are really drippy, and there's not just snot, but like it's running and running and running, we do want to tighten that up a bit. This is where golden seal is super effective, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes golden seal is misapplied, but this is the use case for it. This is the time when it's so fantastic to take five or 10 drops of tincture to start with and see how your muc mucous membranes react. And generally they, they tighten right up, it slows down the drip, and again, that's improving your barrier function there. Mm -hmm. Other astringent herbs are also going to be helpful. Yarrow is a real favorite for that. Agrimony is a really good one. Um, and again, if you really need it, you can do a nasal, a nasal spray or a rinse or something like that. That's fine. Um, but these are herbs where drinking tea, working with them in that format is going to have impacts on these tissues. Mm -hmm. That's where their affinity lies. All right, well, that was like the speed version of dealing with mold in a disaster situation. And obviously that was not everything that you need to know, but yeah. don't worry, you will find more information on dealing with mold in the free educational resources. Um, uh, the link is in the chat for you. And on that page, especially check out the, uh, the link titled Herbalism and Climate Change, flooding. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see that towards the bottom of the page. Now, along with that is a link to donate to our fundraiser today. And you'll see that there's a whole selection of free gifts for folks making donations. Um, and again, we'll be sending you all the information to access the online courses that you're going to receive as a free gift starting in the next few days. This is a manual process. So just give us a couple of days to get everything set up and expect to get your codes by Monday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to get them to you. Don't worry. <laughs> we want you to have this stuff, you know? Yeah. Hey, we're going to move on to a topic around infectious elements. And while we're doing that, feel free to click that link and make a donation. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in the immediate aftermath of a disaster of whatever kind, we might feel like most worried about wounds that you got during the, during the whole storm, during the big situation, right? Mm -hmm. And worried about those getting infected. Um, and so that's all the case, but in longer term risk, when we think about where people are likely to get infection uh, in, in the second day, the second week, the second month of recovery time, all of that, mm -hmm. we're gonna be looking again at the respiratory system and also at the digestive system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, so in the respiratory tract, we're thinking about because there's damp everywhere and, and we're thinking about the water everywhere, right? But it's important to recognize that the the water wasn't just rainwater. There's sewage that overflowed. And so all of the mud everywhere is not just growing mold, but it also has poop in it. And that's not awesome. So there's a lot of vectors for infection in the, in the respiratory tract because of all this dampness. Plus right now, when we're talking specifically about Hurricane Helene, 
the weather is changing. This is the normal cold and flu season anyway, yeah. plus all of the extreme stress that comes after this kind of event. All of that means that we're dealing with a population that has reduced immune function and drastically increased exposure to respiratory infectious agents. Yeah, and and digestive ones as well, right? There, there can be risks of water contamination here that need to be coped with. There's definitely gonna be orders to boil water um, and just good sense to boil your water for, <laughs> for a good long while now, um, including because a lot of actual water treatment facilities are damaged. And so all of this just creates more, more vectors, more points of exposure for people to acquire a pathogen, to spread it to others, and so on. But again, the good news is that there are herbs, <laughs> right? Yeah. And believe it or not, there are several herbs that you might already be familiar with that are gonna be helpful for both of these situations. Now we're gonna talk about three of them and all three of them are safe for longer term use. Um, we're gonna talk about garlic and that one will have a little, if you're taking blood thinners, then maybe you don't wanna have garlic in high quantities every day. Right. But we're gonna also talk about elecampane and ginger and both of those are fine to work with over a long period of time. They're fine to work with in an acute situation but also in a preventative way. Yeah. So let's talk just a little bit about each of these, elecampane, garlic, and ginger. All right, so elecampane, first of all, um, you may be most familiar with this as a, as a respiratory support herb, and if not, then it would be great to get familiar with it because <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, elecampane is a fantastic uh, herb when you need an expectorant for heavy, wet phlegm that's like really lodged in the lungs, mm. hard to get out. Maybe the person's coughing, but they can't quite get it up and all the way out of the out of the out of the system. It's fantastic for that, but it's also uh, a really excellent topical antiseptic or antimicrobial. And when we drink something, we get that impact all through your digestive tract, right? Um, so elecampane is both directly combating infection, but it's also making it easier for any other herb you work with to be an effective antimicrobial. Part of that is by breaking up biofilms that mm. form. Uh, whenever a bunch of microbes hang out together and making them kind of easier to pick off one at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, it does have this digestive support, both through those effects and also through being a warming herb. It's a carminative. It's got a, a bitter element to it. So similar to, to turmeric or similar to, similar to calamus or angelica, those, they heat up your digestive system and get them moving along, right? Elecampane also supports digestion by feeding your friendly gut flora mm -hmm. when, when we make decoction, like not so much with tincture, but when we make a decoction and drink it down, you get a bunch of inulin fiber, right? The same thing you get from burdock or dandelion or chicory coming in, feeding your flora, making sure you've got friends on your side down in your belly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And making sure that the right ones are getting nourished. Um, your microbiome is actually an important line of defense against foodborne and waterborne pathogens. So making sure that you have support for your microbiome is really, really important when you are in a place with a lot of those infectious vectors. Yeah. So many of those qualities are shared with garlic, right? Mm -hmm. Garlic is a digestive stimulant. Garlic is a stimulating, hot, antimicrobial, antiseptic uh, expectorant <laughs> to get that <laughs> phlegm and that gunk uh, up out of your uh, out of your lungs, right? Um, and with garlic, we can be we can be eating it and getting those impacts through the GI system, and then the sulfur compounds in the garlic are going to get absorbed and circulate through the blood and come to the lung. So whenever you consume garlic, you do get both of these kinds of effects, digestive and respiratory together. Right. Yeah. The reason that it ends up in the lungs is because that is the pathway of elimination for garlic's uh, volatile oils. So when you eat a lot of garlic and you have garlic breath that lasts a long time, yeah. it's not just because the garlic is on your tongue. It's actually because as you metabolize the garlic, the volatile oils are released from your body through the lungs. And as that happens, they are bringing all of their antimicrobial action right up and through the lungs. And it's coming like from all directions. Yeah. So that makes the garlic really helpful going in and coming out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So garlic is a strong flavor and elecampane is somewhat of an acquired taste. <laughs> Uh, you know, bitter, spicy mud is the way we sometimes talk about it with, yeah. with love and with affection, right? 
Um, but there's an herb that tastes a lot better than them. And we're thinking about ginger, mm -hmm. right? Ginger tastes great. That could matter a lot. And not just for someone who's feeling picky today, but maybe a kid uh, who doesn't really want to eat a bunch of garlic right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. But ginger is still warming. It's still got a good expectorant quality to it. But it's also got that antispasmodic effect. So it's yeah. really, really helpful, of course, if there's nausea, if there's cramping, if there's spasms in the GI tract, mm -hmm. and then also if there's <clears throat> spasmodic coughing in the lungs, mm -hmm. right? Ginger can reach there with that relaxant effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these could be these could be prepared into tea. That's the mm -hmm. best way for for several of the benefits, especially the Ella campaign. You can have garlic and ginger and elecampane as tinctures. We can be cooking them into food. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these three herbs, these are what we call polycrest herbs. That means that they're herbs that can be very effective in multiple ways for multiple issues. Yeah. And that is ideal when we're thinking about community support and especially post-disaster support, because it means that we can stock up on a smaller number of items. We can have a larger quantity of fewer things, and we're still prepared for a wide variety of issues that come up. Yeah. So that's always what we're thinking about when we're planning our response to some sort of uh, disaster. Right. Yeah. Certainly these herbs could be applied topically to wounds or to, you know, we got a fungal infection on your foot because you've been moving through all mm -hmm. the mucky water and everything. These herbs can help. Don't burn yourself with garlic. I have some stories to tell about causing damage <laughs> to my body by too much garlic, too hot for too long. So <laughs> be cautious, be careful with it, but it is strong stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so let's just take a quick moment to remember that we're here to raise funds <laughs> and uh, we're hoping that y'all can make a donation uh, to support the Community Recovery Fund. The link just popped up into the chat window again, so it should be easy to find. Um, but yeah, if you're able to make a donation to support folks who've been impacted by this hurricane and the fallout that's coming from it, then we would really, really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Remember that everyone who donates will receive a gift for their donation. And also along with the link where you can donate to the recovery fund, you will also see a link that includes free disaster preparedness and recovery information that is yours to keep forever. There's about eight hours of material there, both in audio and print format. Um, so hopefully that will make it accessible to lots of people and you're welcome to share that link because we want this to be information that everyone has access to. Yeah, right on. All right, so we're going to continue the digestive health theme for just a moment here, uh, because it's not just about pathogens <laughs> in the food or the water that we need to be, we need to be thinking about. Mm. Um, a big factor here is that food choices are often minimal after a disaster, mm -hmm. right? You don't always have the option to get lots of vegetables and the full spectrum of nutrients and all the foods that you would choose for yourself if you had uh, everything you needed. Right. Yeah. When we're dealing with um, emergency support, there will often be lots of donations of food and there may be enough calories to support everyone, but there might not be enough like micronutrients or even macronutrients because we're working with preserved food. We're working with things that can be transported and don't have to be refrigerated. And so what that means is that we're gonna end up with some nutritional deficits and human bodies can handle that for a little while, but herbs can help so that we don't have to handle it. Um, and we can think about herbs like nettle, dandelion leaf, red clover, rose hips, hibiscus, even Tulsi, um, all have really high nu nutritive value. They have a lot of vitamin C, they have a lot of minerals, they have a lot of vitamin green. Um, it's basically making a long infusion with these kinds of herbs is like eating vegetables, except right. it's tea. And the benefit is that also these are lightweight they're easy to transport and they don't need to be refrigerated because it's just dried herbs. Okay, if you went through the actual storm itself and have water damage, then maybe your own herbs um, have been you know, damaged by the water. But in terms of donations, it's easy for us to send these kinds of herbs because they're lightweight. And all we need is some boiling water, which okay, again, not everybody can boil water yet, but that's coming. And we can make things like this at community stations where food is being distributed. 
So um, a nice blend, again, any of the following herbs, nettle, dandelion, red clover, rose hips, hibiscus, will give us a really broad spectrum of different types of uh, like plant nutrients that folks need. And you can also toss in some herbs to make it taste really great, like ginger, like cinnamon, even a little chamomile to help people feel calm. Um, it's like a multivitamin, but uh, yeah. But herby, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, another one to consider actually is uh, burdock as a powder. Right. That can be just stirred into into whatever you're having happening to eat. It doesn't have to have like a it's not a strong flavor. Right. But that will build up the fiber content that might help if some bowels are a little slowed down, or, you know, other issues like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you can think of others like a bunch of herbalists in our in our Zoom here today. Um, but be be considering that thinking about what are some nutritive herbs that can be prepared easily into food without a lot of amenities around, mm -hmm. um, but can be boosting it up and supporting people in multiple dimensions. Yes, Yeah. yes. Now, also when we're thinking about digestive support, um, it's not just the nutrients that we're thinking about, but also again, um, emergency food doesn't always make your body feel great. It gives you the calories that you need to keep yourself going, but um, foods that are shelf stable have preservatives and often people respond to that, you know, with some digestive distress, maybe a little heartburn, maybe a little woogie belly or whatever else. So that's a place where herbs can help as well. Um, herbs for heartburns, one of my favorite is marshmallow root, which we already talked about and can be helpful with no electricity at all. All you need is a bottle of clean water and just stuff some marshmallow root in there and already you can be getting relief. We can be thinking about a gut heal tea blend, something like calendula and plantain, and maybe a little chamomile and fennel, maybe a little catnip if catnip, there's yeah. if there's heartburn action, or like ginger if there's a lot of bloating or flatulence. Um, and in that tea blend, you could toss some nettle right in there and some rose hips so that you're both getting nutrients and digestive relief at the same time. Now, don't feel like you have to be scribbling down all these herbs because they are in the free resources that are linked in the chat. Um, but yes, a, a tea like that would really allow you to um, kind of two birds with one well, hand of bird seed. There you go. How yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feeding two birds with one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a place for bitters, right? Uh, any kind of bitters for any kind of person, you're going to wake up digestion. You're going to help them to get as much nutrition as they can out of whatever mm -hmm. food is available to them, right? Um, and then don't forget your favorite herbs to help cope with constipation. Yes. It might be yellow dock. It's a favorite of ours, mm -hmm. right? Simple yellow dock tincture does a great job. And also herbs to cope with diarrhea. And for that, um, really fond of blackberry root as a tincture. Mm -hmm. Find that to be very effective very quickly. So yeah. it's a favorite for that reason. If you don't have blackberry root, any of the rose family roots will give you that strong astringency. So raspberry, rose brambles, um, like actual rosebush roots mm -hmm. as well. Um, and if those are not available, then again, any of your more strongly astringent herbs like sage or yarrow could be really helpful there too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So you're going to find more information about digestion and especially about emergency nutrition. If you follow through to the, to the free resources and you find the, the link there titled emergency readiness needs a meal plan. Okay. <laughs> so follow through there. We'll have a long discussion about that. Um, just find it right there in the chat window. Oh, there it is. Popped right up. Um, you'll see also there a link for donations and a link for some free educational resources. These are for you, all right? <laughs> so please go ahead, click right on that, follow through with those, share that with other people who might be interested. That will also get some more folks who might want to donate to the recovery fund. Um, and again, if you can uh, and you haven't already donated, then uh, remember that we do have free gifts for everybody who donates mm -hmm. any amount at all, right? Anything is going to help, whatever whatever you can do. They're all listed there, so go through and check them out. Thank you. All right. So now let's go ahead and shift our thinking into emotional support after a disaster. Um, I think one of the most important things that we can talk about is managing grief. Grief comes up in different ways for different people, and it comes up when you don't expect it. 
especially when you're living through a disaster, you shut down a lot of your emotional side just so that you can keep going. But that shutdown doesn't last forever and it doesn't always come up at times that are convenient for you. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like the emergency has ended and now we are physically safe. And so now my whole mind and spirit are convinced that I'm that I'm safe, right? That doesn't right. tend to happen that way for most folks. Yeah. Right, right. 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 So um, there are, of course, a lot of herbs that can be very helpful for people who are struggling with, with difficult feelings. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you are already thinking of some on your side, but we're gonna talk about a few of our favorites. Mm -hmm. So the first one we wanna mention is actually a, a pear. <laughs> it's Hawthorne with Linden. Mm. And they're both of course fantastic on their own, but the combination of the two of them, there's just something special. These are two trees who are excellent friends and they work together really, really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are especially helpful um, I like to think about a hole in the heart. They're especially helpful around loss. They give you a feeling of protection, a feeling of being held. Um, and that is something that is so important for everyone right now because everybody in this area is experiencing loss. Even the people who are fortunate not to have lost family members or to still have their home intact, there is loss everywhere. No one is unaffected by this event. And so, um, you know, Hawthorne and Linden are, are they're this pair that I always think um, if we could put anything in the water <laughs> so that everybody gets it, it would be Hawthorne and Linden because I think everyone could really, could really use that. Mm -hmm. But really beautiful in terms of grief and sadness and loss and just supportive a little protective and uplifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And flexible to work with, you know, tea, tincture blends, a nice elixir with a little honey in there, a little yes. touch of sweetness. Yes. That's a particularly good idea. And and I do mean that quite quite seriously when we're talking about nervine remedies, when we're talking about remedies for grief, having a little touch of sweet in there. Maybe it's a rose petal infused honey. Mm, mm -hmm. That could be pretty good, right? But it does it does help people when they taste that, when they when they take it in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to pause for one moment because Aubrey had a question about how long the free gifts with donations will go. It will go for as long as the fundraiser goes. It's not just for this hour. So if you donate later, you still will be able to get a free gift. Yeah. So there's just a little happiness there in the middle of our thoughts around grief and sadness. Yeah. Um, we can't, okay. we can't, we can't talk about this without mentioning Tulsi. Well, that's um, what I was thinking. Like just a just a little a little boost here. Mm -hmm. Um, a little boost is yay free gifts. A little boost is yay Tulsi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's a it's a mint family plant, and they all have a nice aromatic movement to them. Um, it's got a, a very upward movement. Tulsi is one of these plants we consider to have an exhilarant action to it, mm -hmm. to literally lift your mood, lift your spirits. Right, mm -hmm. you kind of just go like this when you talk about <laughs> about Tulsi. You know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's one that we find very helpful when people are struggling to process an experience, particularly a traumatic one. Mm -hmm. Um, there's been some interesting investigations into physical impacts of Tulsi on your brain and specifically on the structures in your brain, where you could say that kind of processing occurs mm -hmm. or the parts that are most active when you're, when you're doing that kind of work. So, um, so it's a very powerful herb for this, and it's also an herb that tastes good and is familiar to a lot of folks already, or familiar enough that they're going to be happy to drink it and take tincture and work with elixir and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, a happy herb like Tulsi cannot make everything better, but it can make it easier to get through the day. It can yeah. make it easier to keep going. The herb that we're talking about here is Tulsi. T-U-L-S-I. Some people refer to it as holy basil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, you know, I want to move on to a plant called Solomon's seal. Mm -hmm. And this is a plant that you might be familiar with in terms of joint uh, flexibility and, um, you know, joint injury and recovery. But Solomon Seal has very strong action on your emotional state as well. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is that when we are in a situation that is unsafe, when we are in a situation that is traumatic, when we have lived through this kind of situation, 
the the body responds by kind of uh tightening up there can be a little bit of rigidity there because everything is so uncertain everywhere that the feeling of safety is to just kind of you know like a little hedgehog when he doesn't feel safe and he rolls up so that all his spikes are out yeah. but we can get stuck in that place yeah. and in these first days and weeks and even months after a disaster there may not be time to get stuck in that little spiky ball yeah you have to keep going often there's there's not always time to rest yet and so that flexibility that Solomon seal can help restore in the joints also happens in the emotional state. It helps to restore our ability to adapt to the situation, even though the situation is dangerous or scary. Right. Yeah. In these times, things are not going to be the way that you want them. They're not going to be consistent. They're not going to be predictable in the way that you've been used to. And mm -hmm. Those of us with a little more tension in our constitutional makeup can relate to the feeling <laughs> of being like, I just want things to be the way I want them to be, you know, and <laughs> Solomon Seal helps you to, to let go of that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nothing is like a, you know, none of these herbs are going to totally change your entire mindset and the way you relate to everybody and make you just be like, oh yeah, it's all fine, easy, but they move you in that direction right. and Solomon Seal can really help that way. Right? It, it can be like the thing that makes it makes it possible for you to get up and move forward. And sometimes we just need a little bit of extra support to be able to keep going. And you can really get that when you have that feeling of adapted adaptability. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, yarrow is another favorite. <laughs> well. um, yarrow is one that really helps when you're feeling like your skin is hypersensitive, mm -hmm. like all the light, all the sound, all the noise around you is just dialed up in intensity really high and it's feeling overwhelming. Yarrow can bring in a feeling of being armored or being protected or having a bit of a thicker skin, mm -hmm. uh, feeling like I do need in these moments to push through, to bull through a little bit and I, I have to brush some things aside. Yarrow can help you to get into that place again, emotionally mm -hmm. um, and that can be very helpful. Yeah. yeah. I like to think of it as um, like when you're feeling exposed, um, you know, if you went through a leather jacket phase when you were in your teens, um, or if you're still going through it now, that's great. That's okay. Um, I can, I can remember. And I still feel that when you put on that heavy leather jacket, it feels like protection. It feels like you're not so exposed to the world anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is what Yarrow can help provide for you emotionally when you don't necessarily have a leather jacket to put on or a house to be protected by. Yeah. Um, it, can, it can at least give you that feeling of security, despite the fact that you maybe are exposed. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then there's Rose and Rose is a very different kind of protection, mm -hmm. uh, compared to Yarrow. You know, there's some similarities in the, in the sense of like, you know, a, a stringency to your emotional body, yeah. right? Like <laughs> tightening up your, your emotional pores to the world in a sense. Right. Mm -hmm. But Rose is one we think about the growth habit of the wild plant, right? Like it'll grow up and then the branches will kind of arch over and make this covered space, this umbrella covered area underneath. Um, and it gives you this sort of like hiding place or this little safe place where you are there, you know, uh, but you've got a bit of thorn protection around you. So like the fox who's been chasing you all day or that bird circling in the sky can't just dive in and, and grab you like you're a little, little rabbit in this image. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're like hiding under the rose bush being like, all right, well, it's a scary world out there, but here I'm safe. I can, mm -hmm. I can hang out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so again, a nice rose tincture or even a rose glycerate or a rose elixir. Yeah. yeah it's not going to, it's not going to change the situation. You still are where you are, but it can change the way that you relate to the situation and the way that you feel as you're trying to move through survival and recovery and rebuilding. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, of course, a lot more to say about grief and the different ways that it can manifest and feel and the different like, steps of processing that you and your own personal journey may move <laughs> through. It's not always in the same order, right? Okay. 
Um, but uh, we do have a lot more to say about this, and you can find a lot more on the topic of grief management and herbs that will be of service here in the free resource. Yes, links in the chat. Uh, find the one titled Herbs for Psychological First Aid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check that out. And you'll also see the link for the donation website. If you are able, please go ahead and click on that link and make a donation. Um, I wanted to note that the free gift for a donation of $50 is our Working Through Grief course and community. Um, and so if grief is a topic near to your heart, either because you feel called to be helping support people through grief or because grief is something that you are dealing with personally, then that might be a perfect free gift for you when you make your donation. Mm -hmm. All right. And then again, you'll also see that link to the free educational resources and you'll find the Herbs for Psychological First Aid link with a lot of expanded information, more herbs and helpful strategies here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So... Here's something really critically important. You're not alone, yeah. right? And we don't want anybody to feel alone when they're facing up to a situation like this. Mm -hmm. We want to call on community. We want to create community to help people out. So let's talk here for a little while about community support, mm -hmm. right? When we're herbalists in the world, we're nourishing ourselves with connections that we build with the plants. You know, I got a tree I go climb basically every morning, and <laughs> that's really a critical part of, of my of my life and my world, right? But as an herbalist, we're also resources in our community. And when there is a disaster situation, this becomes even more important, more mm -hmm. critical. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, these kinds of events are becoming more common. In fact, you yourself may have already lived through some of these kinds of events. And if not, they may be in your future. We hope not, but they may be. And so you may be the only person in your area that you know of that is a practicing herbalist. You may not know other herbalists in person, or you might, which is great, but you might not. But the thing is that when we come together to support one another across the country, across the world, then we know that even if we're the only herbalist we know in our own town, we're still not alone. Hmm. We know that the connections that we're building through the plants and into the earth are also our connections with one another. Yeah. So the AHG has been working to try to enhance this with some new tools this year that are gonna help all of us to stay connected mm -hmm. with herbalists everywhere. And we're really excited. They're gonna be launching a little bit later in the year, in the year. So, you know, keep keep an eye on the inbox uh, when the AHG emails pop up so that you can jump right in uh, to the new community app that's on the way and some other cool things that we're going to be sending you links for. Yes. Yeah. We really hope that this is going to make it so much easier for you to keep in touch every day with herbalists across the country so that even if you are alone where you live as an herbalist, you will always have the support of other other herbalists right there in your phone with you all the time. Yeah. And even if you are the only herbalist around you, you know, in your neighborhood <laughs> right now, um, it doesn't have to stay that way. Right? Yeah. You can hook up together with existing local mutual aid groups and organizations. You can gather some friends together and have some herb parties and be like, all right, everybody, I'm going to teach you about fire cider today. It's <laughs> super simple. It's so easy. We can all take shots of it and breathe fire together. <laughs> and like you are in that kind of moment, you are spreading helpful information, mm -hmm. right? You are building up a base that can, that can go further. Even if all you did was teach your friends the things that we talked about today and nothing else. It still would be an amazing support for your community and it would be a good support for you too. Yeah. So that as you're thinking about community disaster response and, and support for your community, as these things happen, you know that there are people that you can lean on um, to, to help you do the work of supporting your community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, there is much more information about how to build up community support, how to build up people to work with you in your community in the free resource that's titled Herbalism in a Time of Collapse. You'll find that on the link that you see in the chat window with all of the free disaster preparedness and recovery information towards the bottom of the page. And you'll also see a link to donate. Um, so you can click that link if you like. But this resource, the Herbalism in a Time of Collapse, has a lot of thoughts about coming together as a community. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, again, you'll, you'll see that donation link there and we're giving away free gifts to everybody who donates. I do want to make a note that the um, Emergent Responder Program, uh, which Katya put together and it's completely <laughs> fantastic, um, is really excellent for this kind of work in particular, for community building and for understanding the roles that herbalists can play in a disaster situation mm -hmm. and how they can hook up with what, what exists already. It's got everything you need to know about building uh, your own community disaster response team, along with first aid and what we call like second aid or long-term care, um, including things like water filtration, off-grid engineering, even emergency labor and delivery should, <laughs> should never be necessary. Yeah, because like right? even babies don't wait. The yeah. Babies aren't like, oh, hurricane, never mind. I'll just stay in here a little bit longer. Like maybe these the are opposite skills, of that sometimes. Yeah, but... These are skills that sometimes yeah. you're going to need to call on. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the Emergent Responder Program is one of the free gifts available. It's got 75 hours of video, a bunch of resources there, full Q&A support with us for, for life. Um, this is normally valued at $600. If you donate $250 or more through this fundraiser today, you get that whole bundle. That's your that's your gift from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are other fantastic gifts available at all donation levels. Courses on cold and flu management, which will be helpful for any kind of respiratory infection that's going on right now. Yep. A course on grief management, on herbal first aid, a course on neurological and emotional health so that you can support folks through the emotional recovery process. Mm -hmm. And then of course the emergent responder program as well. So take these last minutes here to go ahead if you're able and click on that donation uh, link that you'll see in the chat window. If you're not able to today, that's no problem. The fundraiser will continue over time, at least for the next month. Yeah. And the free gifts will continue to be available throughout that whole time. So don't um, feel pressure to do it today. But if you're able at any point, then we would be so grateful because you will be helping us help the herbal community that's been impacted by this hurricane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and again, we do we do encourage you to share that link far and wide. <laughs> um, anybody who might be interested uh, or might benefit from the info that's laid out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to get as many people to know these things as as we can, and that way we can all support each other better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that free resource link will be available forever. So um, again, don't feel like you are. Um, sort of time stressed for um, working through that free educational material. Um, but we do hope that it will be enjoyable for you and that it's stuff that you can maybe just put on while you're making dinner or something else. And also that you can share with friends so that you can be talking about how to prepare in your community and how to educate yourself so that you can help others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the symposium event and that you're someplace safe and dry, but not in a drought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not too dry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yes, we're so grateful for your support. We're so grateful for your role in our herbal community. We'll leave the chat running here for another couple of minutes so that folks can um, make any connections that you want to make and still have access to those links. But like I said. Um, the donation link will keep working over the next month at least. Um, so if you cannot do it today, but you do want to, you still have time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Good luck out there. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Drink some tea. Drink some tea. <laughs> we'll see you soon. You can, uh...